What's up guys, how you doing? So today, my plans, my big plan essentially is to drive my S13. So I'm gonna wait a little bit later once it cools down because it's kinda hot and humid out right now. Not the best conditions from driving, but we're gonna get on that. Uh, first, I have to go out and buy some new fasteners uh, because I ran out, so I have to, still have to put on my driver's side side skirt and when my bumper shows up, hopefully today, I'm gonna put that on too. And then I'm gonna see if Justin finished the, uh, welding the piping for Drew's kit and finish that so that's all done so Drew's car can be finished. I'm just gonna try and get as much done today as possible. Um, but to start the day off, I wanted to do something kind of fun and different. So I know a lot of you guys like the little DIY stuff. I mean, I love it too. So today I wanted to show you guys how to make a custom shift knob boot. Now what the hell is a shift knob boot? Well, it's this thing. <laughs> so yeah, the factory leather one is all nice and cool and it looks really good, but people like to change their stuff up. I know I do and doing something custom is very fun. So I want to tackle that today. Now the first step to doing a custom shift boot is picking the fabric that you want to make it out of. So I ordered a while ago some bride fabric because I am a butt hurt for this design. So I'm going to be using this as my fabric. Now you can use any other fabric you want. The thicker, honestly, the better but it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can go to Walmart, Joann Fabrics, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, and I'm pretty sure they all sell fabric, so pick out what you like. Now for the next set of supplies, we're gonna head down to Walmart and pick up a few things. So I ended up being closer to a CVS, so I ended up getting what I needed there, and that is a sewing kit and a pair of scissors. Now, you might just have this in your house, ask your mom and or grandma. Now the next step is to remove your old shift boot. So if you guys don't feel comfortable doing the next step, you could always do it without it, but it's a little bit more difficult. It doesn't come out as nicely. So you're gonna wanna take your old shift boot, it's usually two to four pieces of fabric, and cut the thread. Now the pieces are separated. Now you're just gonna wanna try and get them as flat as possible. Sometimes ironing it helps a lot. So now you take your old shift boot and you use it as a template. So the best way to honestly do this would be get a piece of cardboard, pin it to the piece of cardboard, trace it, and then now you have a template that you could reuse over time also if you want to do something else. But I don't have any pins and I don't have any cardboard, so I'm kind of screwed. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to send it and trace this directly on the new fabric. So pick a sec section on your fabric that you like. I think I'm going to do it right. I'm going to send it just like that. Perfect. Old fabric new fabric. So now I'm going to do this with the other piece in a different section. For this part, you might want to hand it over to your mom, your grandma, or whoever else you know that might know how to sew if you don't. So now take your two templates and put them inside out and on top of each other. So I could figure it out. All right, now they're both inside out. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew up the edges just like the factory one. So we look at the factory one, it starts here and ends right at the top. So we're gonna do from here all the way up on both sides. All right, one side done. Now to tackle the other finally all sewed up and it's time to turn it inside out to see if you messed up or not. <laughs> not bad. This side came out pretty good. I don't know what's going on with this side. They came out like crap. <laughs> now the last step on this is as you can see on some shift boots there's mounting holes which allows this to like basically pin into your center console so it doesn't move around. I'm going to cut these holes up on here and then try installing it. Alright there it is. It looks a little big but we're going to go try it out. Looks pretty good. I think it came out really good. I'm really excited. So now it's your turn to try and do it. So good luck guys. <laughs> Not bad. You can make this for probably under $10. So that's really cool. Is this vlogging section right now? This is vlogging section because this is a big day cam. It is. Are you surprised I didn't paint it green and wrapple it? What? It's still black. And it's still good. Is there a mint sticker on it? No. Oh, no. Do you want one is there tarmax, tarmax on it? I nope, mean, there's there no Tarmax. I, 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 I was expecting Tarmax. I'm gonna call Damien out for that one. He has a Tarmax, so he has to hook up. All right. Well, it's officially back. I'm probably gonna need it again. Thanks, Cam. So I'm gonna have to come back and get it. Go and buy one. For another you, you, need, you need one. I know, I'll just go to Harper Frank and get one of like two more bucks. Yeah. Tell Ryan to cash out. Here you are, Jimmy. Here's your air compressor back. 
So I had to run out and do a few errands, so I wasted a lot of time, but I'm gonna head send into advance right now, get some more fasteners so I can get the rest of my kit on. Well, besides my rear bumper, because it's not here yet, but then I'm gonna come back. I gotta check my rear suspension because for some reason it leans to the left in the rear, and I do not remember that hap being like that, so I'm a little nervous at what the hell's going on. And then I think I'm gonna take the S13 for its first test drive on the new tune. All right, so I got the fastener screws, and now it's time to put on the driver's side side skirt, and hopefully I could do it as nicely as this side. So the driver's side side skirt went on very smoothly, and I tapped the bumper in too while I was at it. These fasteners are so nice and hidden, I really like them. They hold up great, and uh, you don't really see them. Now, if only my rear bumper and my other wheels were on. See, that looks great. That looks great. Not so much. Beautiful. Everything looks fine. So I'm gonna assume it is. There's no plane or anything, everything's tight, nothing moved around. So I'm gonna assume it was just like that and I was being stupid, but I'm gonna raise this side just for the hell of it. Um, it should probably get a little higher off the ground because my exhaust drags. <laughs> so I think I have everything set on the 240. I sure hope I do because I'm about to take it for its first test drive since all the new upgrades and I'm extremely nervous. Given I'm a very anxious person to begin with, but holy crap. Uh, so wish me luck, I gotta let it warm up. Then we're gonna send it. So it's still idling really well, um, which is really good news. So I'm gonna let it warm up and I'm gonna back her up. Well, I have no brakes, so that's cool. That really sucks. Ugh, I thought I was done with the brake stuff. This sucks so much. That sucks. All right, so not only do I not have brakes, but the newer one that I put on is completely seized and it's not gonna unseize, so now I have to figure out what the hell I'm going to do. Uh, so the Willwood brakes look really cool and they work really well, but I don't need them. They're completely overkill for my car. Um, I might just end up trying to find a Z32 3 and ZX TT caliper conversion, which a lot of guys do, and it stops the cars insanely well. You just kind of lose some fitment with your wheels. Such big calipers that it makes wheels hard to fit, but I think the Willwoods aren't much better. So I have like two days to find and install these because this isn't gonna work um, and my other calipers trash so crap so I've been on my phone for a while trying to see if I can get a pair of Z32 calipers anywhere in the area and uh, I'm having a hard time but hopefully people go online and see my posts and whatnot so I I just learned that Z32 calipers bolt right onto the knuckle of an S13 it's probably the exact same knuckle because a lot of stuff is like that for the Z's and the S13's an option I could do, if I'm really desperate, is AutoZone sells the TT calipers. They're cast iron instead of aluminum and they don't have a Nissan logo on them, but they're like $69 a piece, but I can get them next day. So it might be my only option if I can't find anything by the end of tomorrow. I don't want to do that. I don't want to spend this money, but hopefully I could sell the Willwood setup to someone for a decent penny and get the Z32 calipers on there. Um, but it's just a race. so. Well, I guess in the meantime, I'm going to take my stuff back apart and start from square one. <laughs> so I removed the brakes from both sides. I left the caliper dangling because I don't want to really deal with the fluid right now. It's just on bolts with a 10 mil. So that's all set. And I was lucky enough to find a guy um, just like two towns over that has a full Z32 brake caliper um, swap. Unfortunately, I can't get it till tomorrow night. So that means hopefully... Every, nothing else is wrong with my car because I can't even test drive it till I put it in tomorrow night and I don't even know if the tune's working correctly. Hopefully it is. Uh, looks like Friday's going to be a busy, busy, busy day. But that's just what happens. I should have took this for a test drive a few days ago, but whatever. I suck. Alright, well, I can't really think of anything else to do at the shop. I'm feeling a little discouraged. I really wanted to go to a car meet tonight, but I didn't go because I thought I was going to end up just trying to dial this thing in tonight, but looks like I just got held behind. Whatever, that's just how, you know, 240s go, but I'm just going to go home. Um, tomorrow, hopefully, I get those brakes at a reasonable time so I can get my car going, and I'm really, really hoping that nothing else happens. <laughs> so, tomorrow, I have to wake up stupid early to go down to the DMV, register the trailer, and uh, I'm probably going to register my ground, I think so, too, just while I'm down there so I can actually have a street legal ground, but uh, besides that, I think, I, I think I'm done, so... So thank you guys for watching as always. You guys know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more content and uh, have a fantastic day.
that, so that's all done, so Drew's car can be finished. I'm just gonna try and get as much done today as possible. Um, but to start the day off, I wanted to do something kind of fun and different. So I know a lot of you guys like the little DIY stuff. I mean, I love it too. So today, I wanted to show you guys how to make a custom shift knob boot. Now, what the hell is a shift knob boot? Well, it's this thing. <laughs> so yeah, the factory leather one is all nice and cool and it looks really good, but people like to change their stuff up just nicely. So you're gonna wanna take your old shift boot. It's usually two to four pieces of fabric and cut the thread. Now the pieces are separated. Now you're just gonna wanna try and get them as flat as possible. Sometimes ironing it helps a lot. Right. So now you take your old shift boot and you use it as a template. So the best... What's up guys, how you doing? So today, my plans, my big plan essentially is to drive my S13. So I'm gonna wait a little bit later once it cools down because it's kinda hot and humid out right now. Not the best conditions from driving, but we're gonna get on that. Uh, first, I have to go out and buy some new fasteners uh, because I ran out, so I have to, still have to put on my driver's side side skirt and when my bumper shows up, hopefully today, I'm gonna put that on too. And then I'm gonna see if Justin finished the, uh, welding the piping for Drew's kit and finish that. Pretty sure they all sell fabric, so pick out what you like. Now for the next set of supplies, we're gonna head down to Walmart and pick up a few things. So I ended up being closer to a CVS, so I ended up getting what I needed there, and that is a sewing kit and a pair of scissors. Now, you might just have this in your house, ask your mom and or grandma. Now the next step is to remove your old shift boot. So if you guys don't feel comfortable doing the next step, you could always do it without it, but it's a little bit more difficult. It doesn't come out. I know I do, and doing something custom is very fun. So I want to tackle that today. Now the first step to doing a custom shift boot is picking the fabric that you want to make it out of. So I ordered a while ago some bride fabric because I am a butt hurt for this design. So I'm going to be using this as my fabric. Now you can use any other fabric you want. The thicker, honestly, the better, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can go to Walmart, Joanne Fabrics, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, and 